Hi guys, got a treat for you today. Who wants to see the insides of a full race all steel Pinto? This, or at least a bigger example, is the car that this engine's from. I originally built it eight years ago. It displaces 2.3 litres, something north of 210 horsepower, and it's been racing for years. Why is it back? James, cue picture. But I'm gonna show you now what the damage is and then strip the bottom end so you can see what's really inside this engine. Basic specs are here. If you wanna read the full spec on the engine, description below. Start in the front corner here, paste dry sump. Essential, this is a circuit racing car. We don't want oil surge. 48 millimeter Gen V throttle bodies. On the end of the steel crankshaft is a skeleton steel flywheel. Under the cam cover, we now have what is now a rusty P6 Newman race cam. And the rust gives a clue, along with the big clouds and the blow up, as to what actually happened. And what actually happened was, we dropped a valve. The engine lost the head of a valve. It rattled around in the cylinder, punched a hole in the water jacket, which dumped all the coolant in the engine oil, therefore sent a load of water all around the breather system, which has sent the camshaft rusty. These valves are REC race valves, race engine components, full IV, amongst the best. 1.8 millimeter inlets, 1.5 exhausts. The head is actually a 1600 casting. The question is, why did it drop a valve? It's been suffering for the touch of valve piston contact, which I don't really understand as to why, because the engine had bucket loads of valve to piston clearance, because I put nice big cutouts in the pistons. Because I built this engine with a lot of valve to piston clearance to spare, it's a little bit surprising it has suffered contact. One possibility is it skipped a tooth on the belt, or maybe the combination of the flat shifting on the seven speed sequential gearbox caused some belt flap on a down change and the timing jumped. If we skip to a clip of an engine on a dyno, you'll see the belt whipping, and that engine is only going to 6,800 not the 8,000 that this went to. Here we have the hole in the water jacket where the valve head <laughs> rattled around and punched its way through. As you can see, the inlet valves, well, the exhaust as well for that matter, had some pretty serious lift on them. The cam is conventional, but I did make some modifications to the valve train that I'm not gonna disclose that actually give it more lift than the cam's intended to have. Graham, why aren't you going to tell the viewers what you did to the valve train? Because, James, the extra lift was an unintentional consequence of a modification that improved airflow. And it's not something that I've ever seen or heard of anyone doing. So it's my little secret and it's staying that way. The cylinder head itself was ported in-house by myself or by hand and flows around 125 CFM at 10 inches depression. After the valve head dropped off, it rattled around in the bore a bit and it made something of a mess of the piston. In fact, at some point, the remains of the valve head ended up upside down and punched a hole through the piston. <laughs> there are two more holes in the piston, one here and one here, but I drilled them because I wanted to double check the thickness of the material left in the crown after I'd machined them. I knew there was enough, but since the piston's already damaged, it's handy to drill into it and triple check how thick they are. Whilst you can gauge the thickness by trying to measure up from the top and down from the bottom, or is it down from the bottom, up from the top? Anyway, whilst you can try and gauge the thickness, there's nothing like actually drilling a hole and being able to see for yourself. So obviously the valve head made a bit of a mess of the piston. Fortunately, it hasn't bent the rod, and we can tell that because the piston height in relation to the top of the bore is the same as it's always been. I built it with them flush. It's still flush. So when the piston smacked into the valve, it didn't bend the conrod. Unfortunately, the bore didn't suffer so well. As the valve head rattled around the bore, knocking chunks out of the piston and head, it also unfortunately took some lumps out of the bore. So this engine needs to be re-blocked. Theoretically, we could re-bore this to a slightly bigger size. It's 93 mil now. We could take it to 94, but 94 millimeter is risky in terms of bore failure and it's a circuit race engine it runs for long periods flat out we don't want to push the bore size to the limit of reliability best thing to do is machine up a fresh block and start again 
Before I pull this all to bits, I thought I'd take a couple of moments on the front of the engine. As with a lot of stuff, at modified stuff and race engines, things aren't quite what they appear. One little change causes another one. We've got a Webcom crank trigger for the engine ECU, but the client decided a couple of years ago to upgrade it. And instead of the trigger wheel going on the front of the pulley, we upgraded to a Cosworth type pulley with the trigger wheel on the back. The offshoot of that was I had to modify the TDC pickup and move it the other side of its bracket, which is simple enough. But once I'd moved it the other side of the bracket, there then wasn't clearance for the water pump and the hose. So the water pump itself has also been modified. It's rotated slightly from its normal position on the block to give clearance for the coolant hose to fit. And what we're gonna do next is a little bit of time lapse where I strip the bottom end and you could have a look at the pistons and rods on that when they're all out. About to lift off the dry sump pad. Interesting, because I've not seen in here for years. Hopefully, I won't see any damage, because any damage is confined to the top of number one piston. So far, so good. So here you can see a better view of the fully counterweighted steel crankshaft, complete with lightning holes in the big ends. And the scallops, we had to take out the block in order for the con rods to clear the cylinder walls. And first view, low compression height, forged piston, complete with custom length steel cod rod. Bearings practically perfect. And it's still a nice fit in the rod. That's excellent. Considering this has been hammered around the racetrack, lap after lap after lap, nine and 8,000 RPM, first impressions are still good. That crank looks mint, which I'm really pleased about. Nine flywheel bolts. This was never coming off on its own. Cheers. This block will now just be put away. It could still be reused. As I said earlier in the video, we could risk a slightly bigger overbore in it, or we could fit liners in it, rectify the damage. It's actually better just to start with a virgin block. But these are getting rarer. It's not beyond repair into the stores, and you never know. It might see the light, light of day in another race car or hot rod. That's typical with most kind of blow ups. We need a new head. Just about everything in the head scrap, valves, camshafts now rusty. There's a big hole in it, so I need to prepare a new head from scrap. Scrap, scratch. The block's dead, we need a new block. I need to machine some more pistons. Thankfully, my custom con rods are perfect, and the beautiful steel crank is still beautiful. Tune in next time for the next update.